to give you a sermon topic because it's easy to follow along. I want to thank you all again for being used by God. And it's a simple, it's a simple sermon topic. And it's going to give you a, a simple uh, a, a blueprint for how you all proceed during the course of this week. Amen. Amen. Pray. Don't doubt. Then shout. Amen. Shout about it. Amen. I'm going to say it for you again. Amen. Pray. Don't doubt. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Then shout. Amen. Hallelujah. That's exclamation point. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You to say Hallelujah. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Say it Hallelujah. So we get this thing. Pray. Don't doubt. Then shout. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that's it. We almost got it. <laughs> we almost got it. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray. Don't doubt. Don't, Don't doubt. doubt. Then shout. Then, then shout. shout. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Now, I want to jump right off into this word. Uh, in the book of Isaiah 55, turn to me if you would. Glory to God. You see, uh, one of the things that we will find out uh, on this Christian walk, if people will have uh, or give you an understanding of what the body of Christ ought to do, and oftentimes we say that uh, we have a limited amount of faith. Amen. And, and, and that is a problem, right? And some will say that we have a limited amount of understanding of who God is. We have a limited amount of faith. There's no limited amount of religion because on multiple corners all over the country, uh, if not the world, uh, people are coming together in his name. So some say we have a limited amount of of faith and that is not the full culmination of the problem. The real problem is not rational, it's it's the unrationalization, if that is a word, uh, of glory to God, of righteousness. We have no rationalization of what the righteousness of God means to us. Hallelujah. We have a measure of faith. The scripture says without faith it is impossible to please him. We have an opportunity to grow our faith because faith is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. But really, uh, without the righteousness of God, in other words, uh, when we accept him as our savior, we become the righteousness of God. You say, well, pastor, I don't understand where you're going with this. Uh, And and so I'm going to tell you, just continue to do one thing. I want you to pray. Don't doubt. Hallelujah. Then shout. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got it. Uh, This is what I'm saying. Uh, To become the righteousness of God is to accept him as your savior, to recognize that you have some rights in this thing so that they're not violated and then move to another level so that condemnation cannot incarcerate you. We are a nation that over incarcerates, under under educates. And subsequently, we over-devastate. Hallelujah. And so what I'm saying to you is when we become the righteousness of God and walk in our rights, then nobody can hold us hostage. And so I say nobody can hold us captive. Nobody can keep us in darkness. And nobody can continuously keep us devastated. Hallelujah. Pray, don't doubt, and then shout, now shout about it. Amen. All right, you got it. Okay, you got it. You got it. Okay, so uh, Isaiah 55, if you stand in reverence to the word. I'm going to read a few verses and then we'll skip down to another verse and then we're going to keep it moving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I believe that we're ready to receive the word so that we can achieve the things that the kingdom has called us to achieve. Amen. Hallelujah. When we are ignorant of our rights as the righteousness of God, a whole lot of communities go further devastated than they need to be. A whole lot of families cannot come together like they are. Uh, uh, Really, the sister can't find the man that she's supposed to have and she settles for somebody who's still called in servitude. When we do not understand our rights as the righteousness of God, a whole lot of folk go hungry that don't have to. Why? Because the righteousness of God practices true and undefiled religion. We take care of the widows and children. We feed the homeless. We clothe the naked. Because that is our right to do it. And we are right to relegate ourselves to a place of power and not a place of being a pauper. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 55 verse 1. And I'm going to skip around, so stick with me. Ho, everyone who thirsts comes to the waters, and you have no money. Come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? 
and your wages for what does not satisfy. I'm going to stop right here for one second because I want to tell you uh, on the 29th, some folk are going to come that don't have no money. Glory to God. They're uh -huh. going to come out in the back of this church. Glory to God. And they're going to be fed very well. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going to get a couple of weeks worth of fruits and vegetables. As a matter of fact, we're going to feed a thousand folk and they're going to come and they ain't going to have no money. And we're going to smile at them and we're going to treat them like they come into the four seasons. We're going to give them five-star service. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to smile at them. The seniors are not going to have to stand too long because we're going to have chairs waiting for them. Glory to God. Amen. And we're going to say, ma'am, would you like to sit down? Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ma'am, can we carry that to your car? Amen. Glory to God. Ma'am, is there anything that we could do during this time that you're waiting for us to serve you so that we can do something to make your stay just a little bit more pleasant? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because we have already prayed, we don't doubt, and we have learned how to shout because that is a full culmination of our faith before our faith becomes fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now shout about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to skip down and I want you to go over uh, down to verse 8 in that same chapter. And I want you to follow me because this word is real, it is relevant, and it will take us to a different dimension in him. Hear me now. This is what the prophet Isaiah, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. Uh, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. That's why uh, when uh, somebody does something to you, you can quickly forgive them. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody does something to somebody Amen. that you love, you can quickly forgive them. Hallelujah. Amen. When somebody does not perform the way, you can quickly uh, forgive them because his ways, we are emulate his ways, glory to God, we take on his spirit so that He, we recognize our rights is to not be bound by somebody that will trouble us with a burden that is trying to keep us within a curse Amen. of condemnation. Amen. That's what happens when you don't forgive somebody. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. They ain't cursed, you curse. That's, That's right. right. They not bound, you bound. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I'm going to let you sit down one minute. I shouldn't tell y'all this. I really shouldn't. It's, it's too much. Y'all look like y'all want it, though. <laughs> and I'm a sower. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give it to him. All them days should be given to him. Absolutely. My cousin, Brother Williams. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. Amen. I, I want y'all to see this verse 10, and I, I, it's going to come alive to you. When you get this, y'all you, think I'm just, this ain't no cliche. But your life will never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. I got one amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. Pray. Don't doubt. Mm -hmm. Then shout. Hallelujah. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that means you're free. Mm -hmm. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the heaven, and do not return there, but the water, but water the earth, <coughs> and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Mm. Amen. Amen. Well. I'm, I'm trying to let y'all sit down. Mm -hmm. He's going to give seed to the sower. Mm -hmm. So the person that don't even have it, but would give, he's going to give you seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And you're not going to eat your seed because it's all that you see. See, that's how your seed gets cursed because your faith don't go far enough. And so God gives you seed to sow. And, and, but because you don't see no natural provision, you go ahead and eat it. Mm. Hallelujah. Now your seed can never grow because you, were, you cursed your own seed. He didn't curse you. You cursed your seed. Uh -huh. He gave it to you to sow. Because when you sow, you will always reap more than you sow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you have to sow it in order for it to grow. Now, now I'm going to let you sit down. i got to tell you this because I would not. Not yet. Just one more second. Just <laughs> one more second. Hallelujah. Y'all do, doing so good over there. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, just stick with me one more minute. One more game. Amen. One more game. One more so shall my word go. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. That's right. It, what is he talking about? His word. His word. It well, shall God. not return to void. me void. Amen. But it shall accomplish, accomplish what, what I please. Mm -hmm. And amen. it shall prosper yes. in the yes. thing yes. for God which I sent it. it. That's right. Amen. Amen. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. 
the mountains and hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Hallelujah. Instead of the thorn shall instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Mm -hmm. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. Mm -hmm. And it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. You may be seated in the presence Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want to remind you all of something. Amen. Uh, when you look down at verse 13. It says, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Now, if you ever look over into a, um, and like in my house, we got a lot of vegetation. We got a lot of trees. We got a lot of mature trees. But there are places that grow sometimes, and it looks like a weed tree, glory to God. It comes up, and it looks like there are moments in uh, the makeup of the land uh, that come up like a tree that can never bear any fruit. And that's what he's talking about. And so he says, instead of that tree that has no vegetation, has no life, that weed, that growth, that outgrowth, he said, you're going to have a cypress tree. Now, I want to remind you, I want to talk to you a little bit about this cypress tree. When you really get into theological study of some of the things that the cypress tree is used for and the thing that the cy cypress tree stands for, the cypress tree stands for a supernatural relationship with God, but it is also a tree that is a covering, that is a, a form of safety. In other words, if you study uh, when God had Noah build the ark, he had Noah use cypress wood. Hallelujah. And that cypress wood would be utilized for the benefit of of saving all of humanity. It's nobody here. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go to a prophetic place in a minute, and I need uh -huh. you to stick with me for a little while longer. Uh, when you think about where you are in the spirit, God is going to parallel that to something that is happening in your natural life. Hallelujah. Isaiah already talked about those who would come and receive food and drink from a place where they had no money to, to spend. Glory to God. Isaiah talked about it. He talked about his word not coming back void. I just he was a seeing prophet. Glory to God. Amen. Let me bring him right here to your address. Glory to God. I'm talking about where you are sitting right now. You are sitting at 4101 Cypress Street. Glory, glory to God. Now, Cypress and Flossmoor Road is actually 194 something Cypress Street. But the east and west is 4101 Flossmoor Road. Right. Now, Amen. You the 40s, glory to God. You get into the seventh year. You get into a place of not just safety and completion, but you get into a place of prosperity. It is no accident that he would put the Cornerstone Church on Cypress Street. Glory to God. Amen. Because it represents supernatural provision, supernatural protection, supernatural uh, overcoming. It also represents the provision for those that have not come to that place of understanding or elevation yet. Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. amen, I amen. three people that clap. Hallelujah. But what I'm telling you is that you are in a place that God will use to save a nation. Yeah, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. You are the place that gives life mm. and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I said, man, we, Amen. we drove past four mega churches to get here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you telling me that God's going to use you yep. and not them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what they're going to do there. I don't. He's going to get a prophet in that house a revelation of what he's supposed to do. He either, that prophet is either going to do it or he's not. But, but I want to remind you that God always takes more and does more. He always takes less and does more with it. Yes, he does. Amen. Everything. Hallelujah. You need some examples? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pool of the Stetson. Uh -huh. Little brother has been to every optometrist in the country. Uh -huh. Traveled everywhere. He still couldn't see. Along comes the Spirit of God operating through men, and he spits, and, and the Christ, he spits in the, in the mud, and he reaches down, and you don't spit on people. Even during that, it was an insult, glory to God. So he took less, the saliva from his mouth, glory to God, and he mixed it with some mud, and all of a sudden, he lays that thing on that blind man, and them eyes pop open. Come on, man. Okay. Amen. I got to give you some examples. Say, man, come here. 
Sabian brought his lunch to a picnic. <laughs> Disciples had made no provisions. And they're trying to figure out what to do. Grown men. Men who traveled with the Christ. Uh -huh. Men who had seen all kinds of miracles like him walking on water. Uh -huh. But here is Sabian. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Powerful name. Yes. And he, all he got is his lunch. And he got a multitude of people there yes. that need to be fed. Glory uh -huh. to God. And so all of a sudden he said, what you got in the bag, son? And so Sabian shows me his lunch. Put both hands out there. Show me lunch. Oh, man, yeah, it looked like you got some salmon and some sardines. A couple of loaves of bread and a few fish. Glory to God. And so, so, so the Savior, he takes it from me. He said, let me, let me, I'm, don't worry about it, son. Go on over there and sit down. Uh, You're going to feed all these folk. Glory to God. Right. Now, hallelujah. Yeah. And then when, when, when Savior goes to sit down, he takes the bag. He blesses it. Glory to God. One of the things that you got to do with whatever provision that you got, remember to bless it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. He lifts it up. Uh, glory to God. And, and he said, God, he, he prays the prayer over the food. And he, he says, and, and then he makes, and then he takes that little bit and then he has the disciples glory to God they start bringing baskets out because it's more than enough glory to God whatever you have in your possession yes, when you give it over to God Thank it you. always becomes oh, more than enough and so all of a sudden the multitude glory to God they get fed and they get led to a savior that can take a little and do a lot hallelujah Amen. pray don't doubt then shout. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Why is that important? Because when you pray, yes. when you don't doubt, yes. when you begin to say thank you, glory to God, hallelujah, you're saying it's already done. Thank glory you, God. God. Thank and you, so Jesus. Your act of shouting, it might seem silly to some. It might seem uh, um, vulgar or, or ignorant to some. It might say, I'm just telling you because you know when we move to the suburbs, get a nice house and a nice car, we forget to shout. Glory to God. All right, all right. We, we, we get concerned about what other people think. Glory Amen. To God. I got delivered from what other people think a long time ago. I, I Thank got you, delivered God. from what my peers think. Glory Amen. To God. That's why I can speak against any issue. Now my sister, she done told me that I talk too much about this same-sex marriage. I talk against it too much. She done told me, so I'm going to try not to talk about it. But the reason I I got to talk about it is because none of my colleagues want to deal with it because they Amen. give too much money to the church and so I talk about it all the time I ain't gonna talk about it that much today <laughs> yeah Not that much. Come on, my colleagues hallelujah they don't want to talk about partial birth abortion they don't want to talk about the fact that when you kill a fetus you are killing you are taking a life Amen. They don't want to talk about it. And so when they look at me strange, glory to God, I pray, I don't doubt, and then I shout. Because I know that if he be lifted up from the earth, and he has always been a defender of those Amen. who could not defend themselves, and I am his seed, glory to God. And I'm going to tell you, I will go where he tells me to go, and I'll grow in the manner that he tells me to grow. And I will say it, glory to God. Amen, amen. I'm going to give you another example. One more game. Hallelujah. Hmm. Elijah. Up on Mount Carmel. Glory to God. I ain't supposed to go over there. <laughs> and you get all these people with power and prominence. They got all the idols laid out. And they talking about their gods is so much better, bigger, stronger than his God. And they making mockery of them. Glory to God. Elijah calls on God. He ain't got no weapons. He don't have no tanks. He don't have no nuclear arsenal. All he has is his God. And I want to remind you of this before I go further. If God is all that you have, he's all you need. Amen. 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 I don't care what you Amen. want to do. And I Amen. don't care who is opposing you. When God is all you have, he is certainly all you need. As a matter of fact, he's not just all you need. He is more than you need. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the same time he is showing up and showing out for you, he can do it every place else in the world at the same time because he is just that bad. Amen. Amen. Meaning Amen. good. So he's on Mount Carmel. Yes. Yes. They got their gods laid out, trying to make a mockery of his God. Hmm. And the prophet begins to pray, and all of a sudden, down from Mount Carmel, there is this massive fire that burns up all of their stuff. I'm telling you that we're coming to a time where those who serve false gods mm -hmm. 
those who push false agendas in the name of their God. Mm -hmm. There comes a time where all of their idols are going to be burned up. My Lord, my Lord. Now, I know this ain't necessarily no flowery message that you don't want to get on Sunday morning. And some Sundays you come, I will have a flowery message. Amen. Because that's what I'm led to preach on that, that, that day. And because that's what the Holy Spirit... But I'm telling you, saints, we got to get right. Amen. Amen. So we can go home. And Amen. And before we Amen. go home, we want to experience heaven while we're here in this earth. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who didn't say... Amen. That might be an implication that hell might be okay with you. Oh, mm. I'm, just, oh, my Lord. I'm just saying, no, no. And it's not that you necessarily know. See, what happens is some people worship God in different ways. So I ain't put, I'm not snapping off on that. But what, what I'm saying to you is that sometimes you can get caught up in a hellish situation and you experience the pain and so you become numb That's right. to the pain. That's right. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah, you, you know, like sometimes, uh, you, you know what I mean? So you could go around with arthritis, right? Uh -huh. and, and, this, and sometimes it's worse in certain seasons than it is in another season. Right. And so when there's a transition of the season, glory to God, you no longer experience that pain because a season changed in your life. Uh -huh. See, uh, believers are the same way. A uh, believers stay in a perpetual place of pain and the season has changed. Hallelujah. Mm. My Lord. Let me just talk to my friend. Amen, amen. Ain't that a big word? That's a big word. Amen. amen. No, amen. no, because we get accustomed That's to right. a level of pain in our life. People who become pain in our life, they've been a pain so long, you just don't just drink more Come on. Yeah, amen. You walk away from the pain, but then you go back and get it. Well, well. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. Ooh, yes, no, 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 I'm feeling pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That, pain that I'm accustomed to, and I, I no no inflammation in my joints. Thank over you, Jesus. Here, but I gotta go back and get my pain. My Lord, I'm unaccustomed to being pain free. So you come on over here and you get back, and I'm gonna just barely get on the stairs because I'm accustomed to pain. But let my me Lord. tell you what the words say. The words say. Who the sun sets free. Amen. Free, free indeed. Yes, Lord. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, you Jesus. came here today to get free from something. Uh, even if it was free from the fact that you uh, needed to grow in your level of faith. Yes. Glory to God. You needed to grow in your prayer life. That's Amen. You Thank for. you, Jesus. You needed to get to a place where you could believe before you see it. Right. My Thank Lord. you, God. My Lord. You can get to a place where even when your money is funny, you can pray, don't doubt, and then you begin to shout. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you the reason that's important is because God can change your situation in a fraction of a second. Hallelujah. Pray. Don't doubt. Now shout. Hallelujah. Now shout about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I said God will change your situation in a millisecond, in a fraction of a second, in a less than at once. I mean, he will change. Let me, let me I'm going to get to another, left, another place in the scripture. Um, but I'm telling you that he will change what is not like him if you allow him to work in your life. And it doesn't matter how limited you have been in the past. It doesn't matter how long that pain has hung on to you. It doesn't matter how long that relationship, when God tells you to alleviate it, annihilate it, get rid of it, walk on pain free. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, I wanted to talk to you about the crutch of condemnation. I wanted to talk to you about why it is so difficult for you to walk away from pain. Because other people will condemn you. Oh, uh, now you know y'all right, been friends right. all of this time. I need something to wipe my forehead with. Uh, all of you've been friends for a very long time, glory to God. And when, and, and now all of a sudden, you, you, you'll call every now and then, but you won't hang together, glory to God. You won't do anything together. You didn't get uh, to be a holy roller. No, you got tired of hell living in your life. You have cut, thank you so much. Oh, glory to God, I knew my wife had to me. <laughs> no, you know, you gotta cut some stuff up. That's true. You gotta dig some stuff up. Amen. You gotta uproot some things in your life. Well, hallelujah. I got some grubs in my lawn, right? Grubs. I know. 
I didn't know what they were either. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm the only little dark spot up there. And I got grubs. It's been that way for 20, almost 20 years. And you know, these things that make your grass look the worst. I think one of my, I, I hate to accuse somebody. No, right. But, I didn't say that. <laughs> my grass was green. Brother Cunningham, it was so green that my, my grass always looked good, right? But then the grubs came. They start killing everything in their path. Yes. A little spot at first. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Look, a, a grub is what it is, it, it's some type of fungus. Oh. See, it's some kind of fungus that, you know, like if you get a fungus under your nails, it'll make your nails turn a different color. Same right. thing with grass. Okay. Grass is green, and you get a fungus up under it, and then it starts eating away of all of the green stuff. Now, the green is represent representative of life. And so when you get the grubs and the, whatever that stuff is under there, and then it starts killing all of the good stuff. See, and, and, and so that's the same with people that want to just uh, blood suckers. They want to yeah. suck the life oh, out of you. Amen. Oh, and and then even every time you, you say praise the Lord, oh, here great. we go again. Right. You say go again. <laughs> here we go again. I'm <laughs> holy rollers. I, I, you can't do nothing without a quote in the Bible. Now I'm going to tell on the preacher. I got to tell on the preacher. Yeah. I'm going to tell on the preacher. I'll put two other preachers. Okay. Two other pastors. Preachers and pastors, right? Because you can be a preacher without a pastor. So these were two other pastors. And so the, the preachers, so one of my, my preacher friends, he loved the word of God. He will preach a sermon to you whenever he sees you. He really will. But he really do. I don't mind from this boy because he is a student of the word. Amen. Pastor Amen. He's a student of the word. So he ain't just rattling off. If I got time, I'll take the sermon, no problem. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But so he starts preaching the sermon in the middle of a conversation. But the other preacher said, here we go again. <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> like, man, that's cold. <laughs> see, no, see, we walking away from the wrong stuff. Right. Amen. Now, every time you see somebody, you ain't got to preach them no sermon. That's right. Before you tell them hello. That's right. How you doing? That's right. right. Now, if you get into some fellowship where y'all talking about the word of God, that's good. Now, the real problem that people don't talk about the word of God, because most people ain't got no word in them. <laughs> Tell the truth, yeah. Pastor. Well. I'm talking about, talking about most, I'm talking about most preachers. You're right. Hey. Oh. Oh. Right. oh, Lord. Ah. Ha -ha. <laughs> hey. They sing because they ain't got no scripture. Oh. 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 Do oh. You don't preach no sermon and don't open your Bible. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell the truth. I'm going to just say this now. Tell the truth. Talk about it. That's why they got to wear the yellow shoes. So you more focused on the shoe. I, I know that's, that might not even be right. I'm, I'm going to move on. Y'all turn to 2 Peter. It's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get accused of, you know, moving to the suburbs and, you know. This is Country Club Hill. They think y'all got all the money in the world out here. And, and maybe you do. But what you do have, what, the, what they may or may not know, is you have the wealth of the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. 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 And you connect it to it when you have the spirit of God. Amen. Uh, when you have right relationship with him, you become the righteousness of God. And so when condemnation comes, you can kick him down the road like he's a can. See, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren, and if he condemns you, then you don't believe that you are entitled to whatever God wants to bless you with. That's right. Do you understand? Let me tell you how. To, let me tell you. It's just, it's just like a um, one plus one equals two. Condemnation plus a believer equivocates to a negative situation. So if God is ready to bless you and he gives you this big vision of your blessing, but then I come to you, the enemy who's the accuser of the brethren, and I'm not comparing myself. Somebody or someone comes to you that's dark and they say, oh, man, that ain't going to work. You ain't going to be no president of the United States. Uh, you're not going to be in a position where God blessed you and your seed like that. No, that's condemnation. Uh, you, you know what? You, girl, you used to hang out at the clubs with me. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. That's why I tell people I met my wife at a club. Amen. On her birthday. That's right. We've been together 25 years, two weeks. Yeah. All, All right. All right. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you started, it matters how you finish. She right. hates when I tell that story. Yeah. Well, that's where you came from, baby. Oh, <laughs> 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 No, so you can't nobody come tell her. 
So when somebody said, well, 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 well Elder Keith is preaching out of Country Club Hills, he's been there seven years. Man, I knew one of my boys did that to Paul. <laughs> One of my boys I grew up with. I just what this we was best friends from fourth grade. He ain't saved yet. We gonna get him saved. So I take me and young Paul. We go we going out to eat. And, and so Paul sees him out and he ain't with me. And so he so so Paul refers me to me by my you know I'm an elder. I'm, I'm you know I'm an elder. I'm a pastor. And he said, well, Elder Key said he said, well, we seen Elder Key. And Daniel like, well, Elder Key, man, we done chased so many. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't necessary. Condemnation. <laughs> what I was and who I am are two different things. Right. But if I condemn you to your past, you will never right. have a future. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The purpose of condemnation is to keep you over here when God has cleared you of condemnation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. So, so what Thank you, you Jesus. Up last week? So what if you messed up before you got to church? Kind of, I, Lord, I repent. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Yes. Now, let me live for you. Amen. Now, you can't practice the condemnation. Right, right, right. right. right? No, you can't perpetually stay. You, no, if you cussing somebody out, you're wrong. That's right. No. It ain't right. That's right. How you gonna, how you gonna yield curses and blessings out of the same? same. No. It don't work. Right, you creating a system uh, of incarceration. See, it, see that. See, see, one of the greatest freedoms in this world it, it is not just a physical freedom. It is not just a freedom from. It, the greatest freedom is freedom from condemnation. Because when Amen. you are free from condemnation, you can create as God told us we all create. Amen. So, but if I keep you condemned. Keep you incarcerated, keep you locked up by your yeah. past, then you don't even have the ability to speak life because your focus is always on your yeah. past. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. That's good teaching. All right, oh, thank man. you. Thank Amen. you. I appreciate Amen. that. Amen. Amen. So you Amen. agree with that, right? Amen. All right, that's what I need. I need somebody to say, yeah, that's good teaching. Because I know it's good teaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I got liberated from being condemned by anybody. Amen. 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 Listen, man, you was out there making money, man. You was in business, and man, you was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you charged people. Yeah, I might have charged some folk a little too much back then. <laughs> yeah. But let, let me let me tell you one of the things that I learned from the world. I didn't learn. I, you know, I heard it in church, but I didn't. I didn't hear. I, I learned that if you sow, your your financially, you'll grow. I learned that from the world. Now, I was in church, and I, I always, Come on now. you know, I'm going to be quite honest with you, when I would hear a preacher, because they taught me how to raise an offering. When I was, I couldn't have been no more than 13 years old at a big church. Uh -huh. I, you know, they taught me how to raise an offering. When it was the pastors, they wanted me to raise the offering. And he, they showed me what to say and how to do it, uh -huh. right? And, and, and so, so I always felt a little, just a, I'm just being honest with you, just a little suspect. But when I would start reading books that were published by the world, all of the books, you know, World's Greatest, O.G. Mandingo, uh, uh, Robert Collier, Riches Within Your Week, all of them would talk about seed going to the sower and sowing. And, and, and so I said, well, man, this is the same thing that the scriptures are given. It shall be given unto you, pressed That's down. Right. You know, so the scriptures, are, and I said, man, the world is using this. They don't even have a, a claim of religion, but their finances, they yeah, they, yeah, they, they yeah. live large, right? right? So they have taken one of our principles and they put it in practice, and all of a sudden, you, you wouldn't look at them and think about poverty because it wasn't nowhere in sight. Yes, sir. And so I look over here and I say, well, man, I got this from the church. And so now, but the church principles work if you work them. Yeah. Now, that doesn't That's mean right. that they, they, they have peace. It doesn't mean that they That's have right. wisdom. That's it doesn't right. mean any of that. That's it just right. means in the area that they sow, in that area, they're going to grow. That's true. Hallelujah. And so when you remove the crutch of condemnation and, and you begin to get it. So I told somebody when they would talk about all the money I used to make and all this kind of stuff. It doesn't appear the kind of money I'm going to make. Amen. You never, you can't fathom the kind of wealth that God is going to create for others through me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, can't, you can't even, man, I start, he start throwing numbers around. I said, God, you're going to do all that. And the first time he showed me, I got a little nervous. Mm -hmm. I said, man, God, that's a lot, man. Fear, false evidence appearing real. See, and so you rebuke, you condemn yourself. All of these are tricks that the enemy. So let's let's turn here, and then I'm, I got I'm, this is my final close. And I, you know, seventeen and a half minutes is really all I really want with the plan. Don't give me you all. But since you all started saying Amen and you started shouting about it, I'm gonna let you leave with some extra. Okay, this is this is it. 
And this is it. That's it. Simon Peter, this is this is 2 Peter um, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bond servant, he was a slave to God, and an apostle, which is one, one who was sent of Jesus, those who have obtained like precious faith with, with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, he goes on to say, grace and peace be multiplied in you, the knowledge of God and, and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us now, this is why I want you, I'm going to have y'all repeat this, right? See, because I know you're getting it when you're repeating it, because even if you don't get it today, you're going to remember this word, and it's going to come back to your consciousness when somebody else comes and further plant and substantiate a seed that somebody else came, to somebody else had planted at another time. And it says, great, somebody say great. Great. And precious, say and precious. 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 Promises. Promises. Now, I want you to say them all together. Great and precious promises. Great, Great and precious promises. promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, uh, now when he talks about great and precious promises, mm -hmm. this, this, and, I, and, I, and I really am yes, closing yes, here. And yes. so when I say, uh, pray, don't doubt, then shout, now shout about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means y'all with me. When, when, you, when you do it, you, got to, you were a little off on the beat. It should have been one, two, three. Ha, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> but you close. Okay. Okay. So, but, so when he says great and precious promises, uh, what he's saying is he's given you these promises. Now, the only thing you need for these things to manifest is you got to believe, don't doubt, and then shout. Glory to God. Amen. You believe, don't doubt, and then shout. Why? Why do you shout after you believe and don't doubt? Because it is an affirmation that God has already done it in the realm of the spirit and it's about to manifest in the natural amen great and precious promises now great to uh an ordinary person might not really be that great it depends on your paradigm you need a paradigmic shift in order to go from the greatness of an ordinary man into the purpose of god's plan in your life see i'm talking to you because i want you to get this and this is it once you get this, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you give a good, significant offering, and then we're gonna fellowship and go home. But when I say a great and precious promises, you have to move from minimalistic thinking. You gotta move and transition on, into a place that is kingdom. I'm not talking about church. Church is religion, and church is good. It is a place that we assemble together. But when we assemble, we ought to be promoting the kingdom of God. And so when you transition from just going to church, glory to God, to a place where you are a mover and shaker in the kingdom of God, then when he says great and precious promises, then those great and precious promises are great. Amen. Amen. And not marginal. There's a couple things God can't do. He can't fail. He can't lie. He cannot do marginal. If something happens to you that's marginal, you can know for sure that it ain't God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh, that, that's Amen. Revelation. <laughs> Thank you, God. I just got that revelation. Thank you, God. See, sometimes we're accusing God, but God helped me, you know, do this, boom. Yeah. Thank God. You know, it's so good to be grateful for the small stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, if something that you accomplish, right, or that, that's accomplished in your life, is marginal. That ain't God. Amen. Mm. <laughs> no. See, I'm going to give you one more story, and then I'm really going to close out. Peter was on the boat with the other disciples. Y'all remember the story? Mm -hmm. He was on the boat. And so it was late night, and he looks out, you know, over the water. And from afar, he sees this, you know, being. Right? And, and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's amazing. Mm. You know, it's powerful. And it looks like this being is walking on water. You know, Jesus, he's doing the thing. He's walking on the water, coming towards Peter. And Peter says, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come. Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah. Now, that's a righteous thought. Now, what believers will say, they will ask the question 15 years in a row, and they will say, Lord, do you want me to come? <laughs> come on, Pastor. I'm teaching now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want me to go? Come on, do now. Do you want me to do, Sister Cunningham, something I've never done before? I ain't never wrote nothing before. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. 
Do you want me to move? Uh huh. Hallelujah. Peter jumped out of the and he said, well, come on, Peter. Because, see, Peter had a righteous thought. Peter had a righteous thought. See, if God tells you to do something, don't ask if it's the will of God for you to do it. Okay. Hallelujah. Don't ask, uh, should you wait till you get more education? I'm just wow. being honest with you. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Don't let the world superimpose stuff on you. That's right. Because the revelation from God is greater. Now, I'm, I'm, Thank I'm you, God. Because I don't want no confusion with my children. I want you to get all the education. I, I don't see too. I want you to get it all. My wife's getting ready to go back and get her MBA. The girl bad. The girl bad. And I, she, she, no, that, that's a righteous thought. Amen. You want to do something like that's a righteous thought? You ain't got to pray about that. Just do it. Right? <laughs> Thank Just you, Lord. Right. Thank you, God. You know I mean? Just go ahead and do it. Ain't oh, no big deal. Right. Hallelujah. So Peter jumped out the boat. And Peter stepped out there. And you know, he said, man, and Peter looked back at the boat. He should have never looked back. That's it. See, that's what believers that's that's it. The scripture really don't say he looked back. I'm, I'm adding that. See, I, I, when I say it's the word, it's the word. This is my opinion. Peter looked back at the boat, and he realized he was walking, walking on water. On water. And, and, and so Peter jumped out. He couldn't get back to the boat, and he's walking on water, and his faith begins to fail. And so all mm. of a sudden, Peter is struggling because he's going down. Whoa! See, Peter's... He shook up now. And he's he, he getting down a little further. See, this is what I want to tell you. In your life, there are times, there are moments when it does not look like things are going the way that you anticipated they should go. See, this is what believers don't understand. Life is not a straight journey up. That's right. Thank you, God. Sometimes in your life, you Thank will go you, up, Lord. and then it's going to go down a little bit. Thank you, God. Do not panic. Hear me now. Thank Hear you, me Jesus. Now. Hear me now. Thank you, Jesus. Hear me now. I need you to hear me now. See, what happened uh, when you take a righteous move based on a righteous thought, even if you falter or fail, hmm. God will extricate you from it. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Peter took a righteous step towards a righteous God. He did something that none of the other disciples even thought about doing. He took the first step. When you take a step towards God, even if you fail, he is going to save you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to close the book because I got a whole lot more. I'm just going to close the book. I know that message was for me. Yes, yes, Thank you, God. Pray don't doubt. Then shout, now shout about it. Oh, 